Hey everyone, John Miller. I am the Chief Marketing and Product Officer at Demandbase. I'm joined today with Steve Roeder, the Chief Marketing Officer of Fork Heights. How's it going? Fantastic, John. How are you? I'm good. So we're here at the RevTech Conference and we're going to be talking about Demandbase today. Um, so why don't you, know, you know, kick things off, you know, tell us a little bit about Fork Heights and then we'll get into kind of your history with Demandbase. Yeah, sure. Thrilled to be here. So uh, Fork Heights, a uh, fascinating company. I joined as CMO in February of last year. So I'm, you know, still new, but uh, very, very cool supply chain technology. So uh, it's an early stage company, about 500 employees. We're growing at a massive pace right now. So uh, kind of heading toward that unicorn valuation that, uh, you know, a lot of startups aspire to. So excited about that. And, um, you know, we're thrilled to be partnering with Demandbase. I mean, this is going to be a key part of our growth strategy. That's awesome. So now let's uh, talk just a little bit about kind of the history of uh, kind of you getting here with, you know, to where you are kind of with demand base because you yeah. started as an Engageo customer, right? I did. In fact, um, I'll go on record and I'll say this. I've, uh, I am a four times demand base customer. So for my past CMO roles, I've, uh, you know, leveraged the technology and certainly also familiar with Engageo and used that in the past. Um, thrilled with both and, you know, obviously excited to see how, how the companies have, are coming together. But, um, you know, I joined, a, you know, Fork Heights. It wasn't that great. You know, it was one of those technologies. And you, you, you inherited Engageo at Fork Heights, right? In, inherited Engageo and, you know, certainly excited that it was there. But I was really, um, you know, uh, I guess challenged to see the, the uh, you know, the, the level of implementation. It wasn't great. It, you know, on, on our side, it was not something that, you know, the sales team embraced. It wasn't something that people used on a daily basis and it wasn't part of the DNA. Um, so I don't know if you remember, but you and I got on the phone probably about, you know, three weeks after I joined the company. I'm like, John, we got to fix this. Um, we, you know, we really, you know, because I've seen the power of, of Engageo and, and the, you know, how it can transform a team. Um, but just we need some, you know, kind of external help to make that story awesome. So we quickly turned things around. And uh, within a couple of months, it's, you know, it's now become the, the favorite tool for our sales team. And they're sending me notes saying, this is awesome. Um, can't believe I lived without it for so long. Cool. Well, so then as, as folks are probably aware, Back in June, we made the decision to merge Engage it with Demandbase, you know, with the goal of creating, you know, what I feel very confident in saying the most complete end-to-end -end ABM platform. Uh, we built actually the new platform based on Engageo, uh, which effectively enable us to integrate all the awesome demand-based technology around predict predictive analytics and machine learning and intent and advertising personalization, bring that all into the Engageo platform. And that let us move like the wind and actually deliver demand base one, you know, which is our new solution based on Engageo in record time in five months. Yeah. And Fantastic. you guys are one of the earlier adopters of the new solution. Excited to see that. Yeah. I, um, I'm thrilled. I mean, if you think about, you know, just two great technologies coming together and now all of a sudden making it even better for, mm -hmm. for marketing teams, um, you know, we're just, we're just excited about the potential. I mean, I'll share some of the things that we're doing now, but also just a vision for the future uh, with you guys. I think it's going to be great. So how was the migration for you? Like, you know, kind of, did it take a long time to kind of get moved to the new solution? Not really. I mean, I think we were, you know, we had a couple of, you know, meetings with the customer success team. Uh, they were awesome. Walked through what the transition is going to be like. And then our marketing ops team took it from there. Um, we haven't missed a beat. Great. Awesome. So I know you've got some slides here. Uh, that we yeah. can to kind of talk about how we're how we're using this platform. Yeah, that sounds great, John. Let me pop those up, and then uh, we can talk through it as uh, as we go through this. Let me uh, make sure we've got the. Uh, let me know if you're seeing that. Okay. There we go. <clears throat> Showing okay on your end. Looks good. Awesome, awesome. So a little bit of context, um, for those of you now familiar with Fork Heights, um, you'll probably be familiar with this story though, right? Hyper growth organization, a lot of companies are, you know, kind of in that, you know, that stage where, uh, you know, they're ready for that, uh, you know, next big leap, you know, approaching 100 million in revenue and all of that. Um, but we're still an early stage market. So when we think about the, uh, you know, some of the value that demand, demand base and Engageo bring, is identifying those patterns. An early stage market category is barely being created. So lots of cool stuff going on there. Um, we sell to large buying teams. So ultimately, 
you know, getting insight and visibility into all the different personas and the, you know, the ideal customer profiles that are coming in, that's critical for us. And this is complex B2B sales. This is not something that happens overnight. This is typically, you know, six to nine month sales cycle, multiple, uh, you know, multiple parties involved. And you can look at the logo list below. That's just our, some of our customers, but you get a sense of the large, complex global companies that we, uh, that we serve and uh, very, very excited about that. So, um, you know, John, I, I framed this, you know, like, a, you know, a good marketing presentation, five ways, got the listicle going right out of the gate. Uh, five ways demand base is transforming our marketing. And I, I chose these words because ultimately, you know, there are, there are phrases that, that I see as I look at, you know, from a CMO's perspective that are really important. And, and uh, you know, the first one I saw is visibility, right? And one of the, one of the ways that we're using demand base now is our campaign managers create a specific target account list and use the use Engageo demand base to really monitor the performance of a campaign. So they get this kind of bird's eye view of this is an example of a food and beverage campaign that we ran earlier in the year and looking at that, you know, that performance over time, but then also being able to dive in and look at what accounts are trending and what's going on there. So really excited about just being, being able to provide campaign managers yet another data point because it's surrounded with data. They're looking at, you know, ad performance and open rates and email click-through rates. But ultimately this starts getting at, you know, the heart of what companies are actually involved in this. So uh, really excited about that is, is kind of giving us that, that visibility. Now, and I just want to clarify for everybody yeah. involved, like every time, all these screenshots that you're showing, these are all from the new demand based one solution. Yeah, it's fantastic. So it looks great. Really, really like the, uh, you know, the user experience. It was, it was a nice, uh, you know, upgrade, but it wasn't dramatically different where it caused a lot of, uh, you know, training and, and restructuring. So I thought that was excellent. Um, you know, the second thing that, that we find really valuable from this, you know, as we think about, you know, demand base and our marketing team is speed. And, you know, a common phrase these days is speed to lead, right? I mean, this is something that, uh, you know, we think about all the time and we've all seen these, uh, you know, stats that say, you know, the, the amount of time it takes for you to follow up and the, the, uh, the degradation or the decrease uh, in conversion rates is significant the longer it takes. So what we have is we have a, you know, a weekly triage and targeting meeting using all of this data from, from demand base. And, you know, point one of these examples out here where you can look at this company and all of a sudden out of nowhere, there's a huge spike in activity. What caused that? What's going on with that particular customer? Well, we, you know, we use this to be very, very fast in terms of response rates and, and exactly what this customer or prospect in this case cares about. So, um, John, you know, other, other comments about some of the other capabilities around this. I know we've, we've also talked about using the qualification score and also, you know, using some of the, the pipeline prediction capabilities uh, as, as part of this process as well. Yeah, I mean, these, those are some of, I think, the most exciting capabilities of, of the new platform that use kind of, you know, big data and machine learning to kind of you know, help you kind of take the process you're doing of kind of identifying kind of these customers and searching accounts and like, you know, applying even more, you know, AI to it. So the qualification score basically is a ranking of all of 20 million accounts, you know, every B2B company out there based on how well they fit to your ideal customer profile. So it's a great way to sort of know where you should be focusing on regardless of where they are in their buying cycle. Fantastic. The, the pipeline prediction uh, takes things even further. And what it does is it sort of looks at the pattern of behaviors that your best customers follow as they sort of approach becoming an opportunity. The pattern of the behaviors they're doing on your site with your campaigns, as well as out on the open web. And when we see an account have a similar pattern of behaviors, uh, that says, hey, this looks like accounts look like as they're about to sort of be moving into the purchase cycle, we give a high pipeline prediction score. So I think when you're doing these weekly standups to you know, prioritize yeah. the, the meetings, that the ability to kind of combine these three scores together, I think is going to take everything you're doing even to the next level. And, and this is live. It's in your instance and ready to go. Yeah, I love this. I mean, I think in many ways what you're, you know, highlighting is something so incredibly valuable for, 
an early stage technology because you really don't know. I mean, you pick your target account list, you you think about your ideal customer profile, but that's changing every single week, every single month, every single quarter as the technologies mature, as the category matures. So getting this kind of, uh, I guess, uh, view into that crystal ball with all that data that you have, it's fantastic. Um, you know, one of the other things that, you know, I think you touched on this is, you know, these kind of surging accounts. And, you know, we, we look at this as well as another indicator of uh, just great opportunities for, for our team to, you know, pursue a prospect, you know, based on a lot of things going on. And I'll, you know, I'll, I'll just, you know, touch on this one. You can see that big red arrow pointing at a couple of uh, examples in, you know, pharmaceutical. And, uh, you know, as we look at, as we think about this kind of intense surging, well, if you think about the pharmaceutical world, you go think about what's going on in the world, it doesn't take much to realize that, you know, you know COVID uh, vaccine rollout is taking center stage. In fact, this was a Wall Street Journal article, John, just a few weeks ago that highlighted uh, Forkite's technology as part of that overall end-to-end -end vaccine distribution. But it's driving a tremendous amount of awareness. And we're now using, you know, the same capabilities to start looking at those, you know, the intent activities for those, those exact prospects that are surging. So if you look at it, you know, you can kind of zero in on a couple of these bumps and look at, wow, this, this particular pharmaceutical company is really interested in on-time delivery and supply chain visibility and temperature control, which is exactly what you'd expect given that current climate. So, um, you know, I know that, you know, we're just kind of scratching the surface on using some of that intent data, but we find that incredibly powerful. Yeah, I think one of the coolest things about this new platform is, you know, how many options you have for the intent data. Yeah. You know, so, you know, there's the demand-based provided <clears throat> intent data, you know, that we, 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 we come up with by looking at over half a trillion signals, you know, every month and like really matching who's out there on the web, looking at content, reading articles and what companies and looking for patterns. So you have the native demand-based intent data we also have a really awesome integration with Bombora. So anybody who's using their, their intent data, that comes natively into the platform. That's something you guys have been using as well. Plus yep. you have to bring in intent data from G2, Tech Target, you know, anywhere else you name it. So, you know, I, I think this intent data is, I think, one of the biggest, most important things happening in ABM these days. Because it, it, it lets us reach out to accounts at the right time when they actually want to hear from us. As opposed exactly. to pounding on their door when they're like, I don't even know what you do or why I would care. Yeah, timing is everything, right? And if you think about even just this illustration on the screen, um, if we would have uh, reached out to this company, you know, five, six uh, weeks ago or a month or two ago, it probably wouldn't have been the right time. But all yeah. of a sudden, you know, they're investigating things that are absolutely the center of the bullseye for. Cool. Let's keep going. Look at that. So, um, uh, you know, one other thing that we look at is just the alignment of, of, uh, of the teams. And in many ways, you know, this is a challenge for any fast growing organization, uh, aggressive sales team, aggressive marketing, aggressive SDRs, we're all working to, you know, for similar goal, but sometimes, you know, three, three teams running fast and maybe not the exact direction. So we're using the, uh, the weekly reports every single Sunday, uh, email reports go out to the exec team, sales leadership, marketing leadership and you know each and every sales rep has a their target account list and everything going on within those accounts so you know you can see these guys here every single sunday it's really clear here are the accounts that are surging in your particular patch and here's an opportunity for you to really kind of you know strike while the iron's hot with those particular accounts and then you know then the the uh, the sales team and the SDR can take that and work together and say, where are there holes in the buying process? Do we have, you know, do we're missing data at the, or, or you know, contact at the, at the C level in this account? Or where are we strong and where are we weak? So we really kind of dive into that once we get that. But the, the North Star, if you will, or the trigger point, fantastic. And we love those reports. So it really helps kind of, you know, take the, the uh, or it, it, it really amps up the adoption rate. And you're looking at, you're showing this in, in the demand-based product, but your reps yeah. are usually going to be looking at this inside Salesforce. Yeah, exactly. I mean, this is one of the things that, you know, new tool adoption of any technology, you, you know, you put it where the team lives most of the time and it makes it so much easier. So yeah, we find that to be incredibly valuable. So um, two other quick points and, you know, and, uh, you know, I'll, sh I'll share one thing that's really, I guess, an unexpected benefit. And, uh, you know, I found this from uh, talking to 
the, uh, the SDRs and the sales team is clarity. And I use that word because clarity of message at our stage, early stage companies is so important. And, you know, you, you don't always know exactly what people are looking for and what people are searching for. But, you know, what we find is, you know, the SDRs and the sales teams will actually sit together and then not only, you know, look at the accounts that are surging, but they start using some of these advanced filters. We love these things to start getting into the details on what, you know, what type of content is actually being looked at. And from there, you can really start to uh, get your kind of heat map in your view in terms of where you should focus and what you should focus on. It's fantastic. And, uh, you know, just uh, as we kind of, uh, I guess, think about where things are going, again, super excited that, you, you know, the companies have come together. I think this is going to be incredibly powerful. Uh, two things on our roadmap that I can share, you know, that I think are going to be game changers for us. One is advertising. Today, you know, we're using another, uh, we're using another technology for doing display advertising and so forth. Um, incredibly cumbersome workflow. And now all of a sudden having that completely linked to the demand based platform for looking at surging accounts and immediately putting those into a specific ad rotation, that's, that is absolutely spot on for us. And then personalization. I think, you know, kind of the future of B2B for us is, uh, is going to be hyper personalization of content, using that information that's available to start, you know, crafting the perfect message for the perfect persona at the perfect stage. Obviously that's, uh, you know, a little bit of, uh, you know, uh, future vision, but we're heading toward that really fast. So, uh, you know, uh, with that, you know, John, that's all I had to share, but again, super excited to be part of the, part of this conference and, uh, you know, share what we're doing with the team. Yeah. Well, I think, you know, if I can just pull out some themes that, you know, I was excited about is, you know, I think, you know, you shared a lot about how you're, you're using the platform and looking at both engagement intent, and then soon to be, you know, machine learning to yep. discover those in-market accounts that are really ready to buy and then to kind of, you know, move quickly <laughs> with speed to kind of follow up uh, and really kind of ultimately bringing sales and marketing together by connecting kind of those revenue insights to action. So that, yep. that's definitely an exciting theme I heard. I think the other one that um, is, you know, I think kind of where I'm excited where you're going is, you know, really starting to orchestrate the account experience where yeah. you're, you're going to be connecting, you know, your insights, which tells you when to engage and what to say with the sales touches, with the advertising, with the website experience. And, you know, overall, I think that's going to deliver a better account experience. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, if you think about it, uh, you know, we're now pushing uh, B2B where, you know, B2C is kind of thought about for a long time in terms of omni-channel consistency and, uh, you know, it's right there. So it's fantastic. And especially when you start thinking about, you know, the business impact, shortening sales cycles, getting crisper on your messaging uh, and, and really driving that growth that a lot of you know, B2B companies are, are, are striving toward, uh, you know, again, for us is game changing. Good. Well, listen, Steve, this has been a blast to, to yeah. and hear how you're, uh, you know, using the new platform. And, and again, just, you know, thank you for being a four-time customer and for, uh, for all the success that you have in both uh, using this and also helping to evangelize ABM. Fantastic. Well, thanks, John. Thanks for having me and uh, have a great conference. Cool. Cheers. Cheers.